What's up, guys? Uh, this is my penile implant journey. I'm doing a little update. I think it's been three, four, maybe five months since I've last posted an update to YouTube. I'm recording this one a different way, so hopefully I don't talk for 40 minutes and then lose everything I just talked about. Um, so I guess there's a decent amount to update, and just logging in, I had a couple different notifications, which is kind of cool to see, so I'll try to address some of the questions uh, people ask through YouTube. Um, I guess to start with, I should start with saying that I had a revision, um, revision meaning my original implant was removed, had to go through surgery again, um, I got a new implant placed. So as you probably know, just from um, my previous episodes, um, I had what was kind of considered floppy glands where the tips of the implant cylinders did not go into my glands. Um, this wasn't a humongous issue. I could still have sex. I could still have intercourse. Um, I could still get off from intercourse and, um, you know, the, the floppy glands when I was erect was not floppy, kind of like you see in pictures. It was only like that when I was flaccid. Um, I get really good glands blood flow, so that was actually strong enough to keep my glands supported um, when I was inflated and having intercourse and aroused. Um, but the problem was it just didn't feel right when I would have sex, it didn't feel good um, in that, that just under the glands area where there wasn't a ton of support. Um, so I couldn't really have sex the way you want to have sex. I would have to do it in certain angles and you know at a certain speed. Definitely had to have a ton of lubrication to help. Um, I will say that receiving oral sex was perfectly fine. Uh, absolutely no issues with that, which I'll probably get into a little bit. Uh, so I guess, yeah, I'll just start with, I guess I'll, I'll update some of the back information leading up to the revision and I'll talk about the revision. So, um, back in September, I reached out to a couple of different physicians, probably even before that. Um, which I think I talked about in previous episodes, but I ended up scheduling appointments with Dr. Carrion, who's down in Tampa, and then also Dr. Hackey, who is in Atlanta. Um, went and saw Dr. Hackey, and he he immediately said I was undersized. Um, he could just tell right away. So basically, he came up with a plan of there were three potential steps. The first one was if I didn't have scar tissue or if I did have scar tissue, either way, he was gonna try to dilate, cut scar tissue from the glands so that he could put bigger cylinders in that will go all the, all the way into my gland so I didn't have that floppy glands issue. Um, the, uh, another step was if he couldn't cut that out, if there was any, um, he was going to kind of come in from the side, basically have to cut an incision on the side of my penis and um, go in laterally to cut out any scar tissue. That's called, a, I believe, a corporal plexi, I believe is what it's called. And if that um, also wasn't going to help, he was just going to have to resort to step three which was a gland pexy, which is basically just cutting some skin off right below the glands and then suturing it back in place so that the glands is brought in tighter um, over the cylinders. Uh, this obviously is going to result in losing a little bit of length. 
Um, and glands pexy was actually what my original surgeon, Dr. Tatum, wanted to do. Um, all right, so before I get to the actual revision, um, I had a, another appointment scheduled with Dr. Carrion in Tampa. I had hotel and flight paid for it, but Dr. Hackey, basically, I was convinced after meeting with him that he was who I was going to go with. So canceled my appointment with Dr. Carrion. Um, still went down to Tampa anyways, but just didn't go to my appointment. Uh, so the only real update I want to give um, regarding kind of how the implant worked prior to my uh, revision. I had an old friend, a uh, girl I had a huge crush on about a decade ago. Um, you know, there was never any like romantic relationship or anything with her. I just always had this like schoolgirl crush on her. Uh, she was a bartender and I would basically just see her all the time and was in love with her. Um, we had some co common friend groups, but I never really made a move towards her or anything like that, most likely because of fear of failure, even though we went on some trips together, like snowboarding trips and stuff, and we're just out at bars different times. Um, so anyways, on and off, we've kind of just caught up um, over the years. Asked her to go to a wedding with me. It was out-of-state wedding, so we had basically three three days to spend together. Um, we ended up having sex seven times, maybe. Um, a couple of those times being oral sex. And it went pretty good. Um, the first couple times, especially the first time, um, there she seemed to have some issues with um, how wet she was. Uh, she was seeming to dry up quickly. And um, so something weird that happened with that is with what I noticed was if you have this floppy glands syndrome where your tips of your implant don't go all the way into your glands, you need a lot of lubrication to make it work. Um, when she would start to get dry, it would almost become painful for me. And um, I definitely noticed my glands and blood flow, the engorgement went away when there was not as much lubrication. So then that made it even uh, more, not uncomfortable, but just not pleasurable. Um, I don't know the reason why um, she wasn't fully wet, lubricated. I It could be because I was wearing a condom. I don't know if that's something that sometimes does that. Um, yeah, I'm not exactly sure why. But basically, she identified it and just kind of said she doesn't know why. Uh, she's not staying wet, but she, we just went to CVS and she bought some lube and um, using lube every time after that seemed to fix all of those issues. It was really beneficial. Um, she, she gave me oral, which was the first time I received head while having an implant. Um, I think she actually did it twice and didn't she didn't seem to notice anything didn't say anything um and it felt amazing receiving head with floppy glands or unsupported glands whatever you want to call it uh is no issue whatsoever one of the, the second time she did kind of start to uh feel around my scrotum which i have not yet started hcg so my uh, scrotum is a little smaller. My balls are a little more like contracted. Um, she didn't say anything. I'm, as far as I remember, I'm pretty sure she probably like felt around where the ball was and then maybe just moved her hands or something. She didn't say anything. She didn't seem to care. 
Um, I never ended up telling her I was implanted, but um, I was considering it. I just never ended up doing it because I don't really have plans to hook up with her again. I'm not saying it won't happen, but I would probably only tell her if uh, I considered really maybe dating her. Um, so, yeah, that's just an update on that front. Um, and again, for a lot of people, this isn't going to mean anything because this unsupported floppy glands issue is particular to me. Um, most implantees are not going to have this issue at all. So now let's fast forward to um, my revision. Just had my revision two, two or three days ago. Today is Thursday. I had it Tuesday. So it was two days ago, about 48 hours ago. <clears throat> um, pretty good experience flew in Atlanta. I've been staying just here in Atlanta for a few days. I'm flying back home tomorrow. Um, Dr. Hackey's awesome. Dr. Tatum's awesome too, but Dr. Hackey is definitely really cool. Um, definitely just a master of the art and craft of implanting. Um, so basically I was, I had 21 centimeter Titan installed by Tatum, Dr. Hackey's revision. He fit a 26 millimeter, which is extra large. He actually said it's 2XL. Um, I can't confirm that because I haven't seen anything as far as literature or website on it, but yeah, he was able to fit in basically five more centimeters of cylinder into my penis, which is crazy. Um, he was planning on leaving my old reservoir in, but he said there was some air in it, so he just replaced the reservoir. He actually gave me the new, uh, I think it's called One Touch or Touch pump, whereas before I had the old pump. I actually kind of liked the old pump. I didn't mind it. Um, so I'm just curious to see when I start cycling what this new pump is going to be like. It definitely feels a little bit bigger than the old pump. Um, I can definitely tell that. Um, I really didn't have any complications with this revision. Um, I was pretty calm coming into it just because I had already had one. I knew what to expect. Um, the only issues I guess I had day one of or the day of the operation was some nausea. I always get nausea from a, uh, anesthesia. No matter what meds they give me, it doesn't help it. I puked twice after getting back to the hotel and then <clears throat> had crazy pain trying to pee uh, from the catheter. <laughs> it took me like literally an hour to empty my bladder in the shower because every dribble I let out burnt so bad. Usually I don't have that much of an issue with catheters, but man, this one was bad. I was actually starting to wonder if I would ever piss again. <laughs> um, one of Dr. Hackey's nurses, Terry, helped me. Uh, she charges $50 an hour. She drove me from the hotel, or from the hospital to the hotel room, stayed with me for a few hours, uh, checked in on me and removed my drain two days later, which is just today. Uh, so Terry's pretty cool. She's helpful. Um, she's responsive. If you're ever using Dr. Hackey, which I would suggest to anyone, then, uh, and if you're coming in without, you know, any family or anything like that, she's definitely someone that I would use for assistance. Tuesdays and Thursdays, I think, are the days she's available. Um, so, yeah, Dr. Hackey said I didn't have any scar tissue in the glands. Um, he was able to just use a dilator, um, push right up into the glands and dilate some of that tissue to be able to fit in the longer cylinders. Um, he said everything went really well. And um, dude's just really cool. Sent me a video. Probably I was still on the operating table. As soon as he got done, he just kind of shot a video of himself. Uh, telling me what he did, sent me a couple follow-up text messages. 
Um, even when he was talking to me at pre-op, he had his phone out. He had a couple patients texting him. Uh, he's just really responsive, and I like that. Uh, actually, he just randomly gave me a phone call this morning, too, to just check in and see how things are going. <clears throat> um, so pretty cool bedside manner. Um, his office here in Buckhead, Atlanta, is pretty clean and crisp and modern, too. I like that compared to some offices, um, different places. You know, doctor's offices usually just aren't warm and nice. Um my, with him, I actually had, he does operations at his clinic, but because mine had the potential for like three different things that were needing to happen, um, we did it at a hospital up just northeast of Atlanta. Um, so yeah, he said there wasn't any scar tissue. Um, so what he said happened with me that he thinks the reason I was shorted my first implant were there's two different reasons one is that my urethra uh basically the tip of my penis where the urethra is and the urine comes out is just a little bit longer maybe than than normal and so i sort of urinate out of the bottom of that tip whereas most people urinate out the very end of their penis where the tip is mine's um, just a little bit below that. So he thinks that um, most implanters bend, like when they secure the urethra, they will bend the glands down in order to, uh, when they dilate, in order to like safely identify where the urethra is. But because mine extends down, um, that made it seem like I was being dilated for all the way into my glands when I actually wasn't. So what he said he does, he said that he bends the glands up instead of down. That way you can um, identify in the small percentage of guys who have uh, that biology with the urethra, um, you don't miss it by bending it up. You can fully get into the glands when you dilate. Um, the other piece to that was that he does penoscrotal instead of infrapubic. Um, infrapubic being the incision just above the penis, whereas the penoscrotal is the incision kind of at the top of the scrotum, very bottom of the shaft. Um, there's definitely a, a lot of literature, or at least some literature I've seen, where physicians, surgeons are able to Eas more easily put in a bigger implant by going penoscrotal instead of infrapubic. Um, so by going penoscrotal, he just said he had a better view um, straight down, you know, like the lines of where my urethra is. So he was less worried about damaging it because he had just a perfect view of where he was going with the dilation in comparison to the urethra. Whereas because Tatum went infrapubic, um, he was looking at the top of the penis and couldn't quite see the urethra that well. So he thinks that those two reasons combined are why I was orig originally um, kind of downsized or not given a big enough um, implant. Um, but I think Tatum and Hackey are both great physicians. Um, I would suggest them to both. Um, every physician, Dr. E, Dr. Kramer, uh, Cartman, even hacky, I've seen all of them have cases where um, some of their patients have had floppy glands. Uh, Dr. Prito as well. It's Dr. Prito said probably 25% of his cases have that issue. So uh, it's a, it's a minority, but it exists, and some people are going to run into it. Um, hopefully, it's not anyone listening right now, but um, there are options around it if that happens, and I'm just happy I found Dr. Hackey. Uh, my tips are, tips of the cylinders are all the way in my glands now. Um, I haven't really been able to activate it. I'm at maybe 30% pumped up right now. I feel great. Um, today's day two. I just got done taking like a 30-minute walk 
around Buckhead, Atlanta, just to get some food and stuff. Um, I feel really good, and I'm allowed to start cycling in 10 days. Um, he told me to wait three or four weeks before um, using the implant, having sex, which is going to be tough because I'm going on a date in 10 days with this girl who is maybe the prettiest girl I've ever gone on a date with. She's literally like a 9.8. She's a really hot news reporter, but she is moving in January, so I only have so much time with her. Um, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> um, one, the other thing I'm going to add, cause I just always want to add this in is just the emotional aspect, um, as a man of having a penis that works, even when mine was kind of still the floppy issue. Um, just knowing I could have sex at any point, anytime I wanted, um, was great. Just going about your day is so great you just really have a dark cloud that leaves your body um and it helps you enjoy the other aspects of life much more so we get, i got a comment um from a wife who let me read the comment real quick um she says, thank you for doing these videos. My husband and I will be going for his first appointment in December to get started on a penile prosthesis. Your info has helped with certain questions for the urologist and what to expect. We'll be looking for more updates. Um, honestly, when I started doing these episodes, I just did them expecting 100% of the listeners would be men. Um, I know the year or two leading up to my first implant, I devoured over and over every story from franktalk.com, anything I could find on YouTube, anything I could find anywhere, Reddit. I mean, I searched high and low over and over and over just for every possible story, just so I knew what to expect and just to make sure I was making the right decision, especially being 34 years old and having this done, knowing I would need multiple revisions down the road having no idea I did one in four or five months. Um, but so, yeah, I didn't expect to really be disseminating towards women, <laughs> but uh, I'm glad I did because women, um, at least in my experience, not all the women um, quite understand what it's like emotionally and understanding the issue and that it's not just a macho thing or like a wanting to have sex with whoever type of a thing. Um, for a lot of men, I can speak especially for myself, uh, just the way that this helps would, or would help a man and his wi wife just in their marriage um, become closer and just for the man to be able to open up and flirt with his wife kind of the way he wants to without fear. Um, that's the biggest emotional impact. So I'm happy that, you know, some women are listening in and able to understand that aspect and that uh, there's so much more to this than just, you know, the physical act of sex and erections and stuff like that. Um, let me see if there's any other comments or questions that were... So somebody said... Did you have any penile pain before the implant during the peak of PFS symptoms? Um, not really. I had more like perineum or pelvic floor congestion than actual penile pain. Um, there maybe were a few instances where I had hard flaccid. Um, if you've had, if you have hard flaccid, you know what it is. If you don't, you're probably like, what the heck is that? basically where your penis is really constricted and small and hard and veiny. Um, that would come and go quite a bit, especially towards the beginning. Um, that, and that pain was different. Um, it, it wasn't maybe like what some people feel with payronies or anything like that. Um, so I guess mostly my answer to that is no, um, but maybe a little bit. Let's see. 
here is a question. I'm assuming. So did she act like you had a perfectly normal erection and not notice the stiff rods or the third ball? I would be worried during oral or manual that she might feel the implant. Um, I'm assuming he's talking back to one of the first two girls I had intercourse with. None of them for sure noticed at all. Um, the most recent girl, um, the most recent one that I was just talking about this episode, the, the one I took to the wedding, um, she would be the one that would have noticed if any of them would have. And she may have noticed something, she just didn't say it. Um, she definitely didn't seem concerned or like weirded out or anything. So um, really the only way they're going to notice is if they're playing with or fondling your scrotum. Um, the implants in the actual shaft itself feel almost identical to a normal penis. The only difference uh, will just be if you want it to, it can get way harder than a normal penis. If you pump it to 100%, um, it's harder than a normal erection. So I prefer to be more like 90%, 95%, something like that. And if you're going to receive oral, you might want to be more like 85%. You can play around with percentages and see what your wife or girlfriend prefers because it sounds like uh, different women prefer different um, pump percentages. Um, yeah, the only thing I'll add to that is that when she was feeling my penis, I think the second girl is who he's referring to. So this is, you know, back when I had the tips that didn't go all the way to my glands. So there was kind of a weird feeling of like the hardness would end because it's the end of the tips would end just below the glands of my penis. And then the glands, even though it was gorged, was not quite as hard as what the implant pumped up was. Um, so even when I would feel my penis, sometimes I'd be like, oh, well, that's a little strange. Um, I'd highly doubt she thought anything of it, but just me feeling my own penis, I could tell that. And now that um, Hacky has the tips all in my glands, it just feels like a normal penis. Just got some other people just saying thanks for the comments or thanks for the the updates. They're helpful. Um, thanks for doing these. Yeah, just a couple subscribers. So appreciate you guys listening in. Glad I could help. Tons and tons of people you know posted their stories before me, so I just wanted to make sure to post mine as well, so people know what to think of. Um, my recovery from these have been much quicker and better than some of the other stories I've read. Uh, I literally feel like I could have gone back to work today, mostly just sitting at a desk. Uh, and that's day two. So that's abnormal. Um, I would imagine the next week or so, I'm going to have numerous aches and pains pop up, uh, things of that nature. So yeah, that's really all the update. I'll try to update again in a few weeks. And if you guys have any other questions or comments, leave them here and I will try to answer them. Thanks, guys. All right. Just a couple minutes after ending that recording, I thought of a few more things I wanted to uh, bring up, just small things. Um, one of them being the bulge of the Titan. Obviously, the Titan um, implant is a little bit thicker, bigger than the AMS LGX and the AMS CX um, in its flaccid state. So that was a big concern of mine of getting the Titan was I didn't want to have that big bulge. Um, there definitely is a little bit of a bulge. It's not as big of an issue as what I expected. And funny enough, uh, in some ways I came to almost be cool with it in that I, I wouldn't say I would flaunt it, but I just stopped being so worried about it. 
Um, you know, if somebody looked down at my penis and saw what looked like a big penis, I just was cool with it. I didn't like try to hide it. Um, I didn't feel weird about it because I don't think it looks like you have an erection. I think it just looks like you have a big penis. Um, now that I have five more centimeters and what is an XL or two XL, which just means the girth is going to be bigger than the typical implant. I'm curious to see what that will look like. Um, it's hard for me to tell from that right now because I'm like anywhere between 30 and it's somewhere between like maybe 30 and 60 percent um, filled. So um, you definitely can tell right now through my pants just looking in the mirror um, that it's there. Uh, but when I deflate it, um, then it might not quite look as big. Um, and you can wear different outfits to conceal it. I've found, you know, different shirts, different pants. It looks different. Um, the other thing I will say is that with my first implant, I had the old pump, the Genesis pump. Um, that, according to Dr. Hackey, you can get some auto inflation from that. So, like, if you try to, to urinate or try to poop, like, kind of that squat down, bear down, um, flex he says that that can push some saline back into your cylinders if you have the genesis pump so i would get some of that auto inflation um, with my previous pump and he said that this one has three valves the newer one the newer pump has three valves so i shouldn't get any of that auto inflation anymore um that was something to add I think the other thing I wanted to add, just because somebody asked, like, hey, did she notice you have an implant? Um, with the Titan, I'm not sure if the other ones are like this, but when you're deflated, certain points, um, if you squeeze the cylinders, there's like a little bit of a squeak with them. Um, just due to it, the, the material, silicone-ish, um, it just kind of makes that sound. It's not loud enough like somebody can hear it. It's more of like a, a squeak that you feel in your hands, like uh, I guess like a tactile kinesthetic feel. Um, I don't know. It doesn't bother me at all. But um, I was hanging out with a girl um, and she laid her head on my lap, like right on my penis. And because I was deflated, she just happened to land it like right on the spot, which is at the very bottom of your shaft where that squeakiness happens. Um, and so I felt the squeak when she did that. And I was just kind of wondering if she did, she may have, um, again, I don't think she would have thought anything of it. She probably would have thought it was my pants or my underwear or something like that. Uh, but that was just something random that popped in my head that I was going to mention. I'll add this on hopefully to the end of the previous recording and make this all in one video.